and welcome to GameSack. We are once again talking about games that were in the arcades and they were never ported to a home console ever. And you have stuff to say about that, don't you? <laughs> I do. It's kind of a bittersweet episode because it's great because we get to actually do a show topic on this, but mm -hmm. it sucks because none of these games came home to my Super Nintendo. So. <laughs> Indeed. But you can play them on MAME as we're yes. doing here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I'm going first. And... <laughs> Let's get to it. We all remember DJ Boy, right? Of course we do. It was everyone's favorite game of all time. Okay, maybe not, but it was okay. You basically just played as a hip and happening dude beating people up while roller skating. It was even ported to the Sega Genesis. But Kaneko made an arcade-only sequel called B-Rap Boys for one to three players. This is a crazy beat-em-up. As far as I can tell, your main goal in life is to rap. But then these fools bust through a billboard and, well, you ain't having none of that. That must have been your favorite billboard or something because now you're chasing them on your bike and you're beating the crap out of them. Yep, each and every one of them until they are dead. This game is a lot more fun than DJ Boy. It's especially fun when you're on your bike fighting the bad guys. And when you get knocked off your bike, you're back on your trusty roller skates to kick ass DJ Boy style. I wonder how he rides the bike with the roller skates on. Oh well. But being more fun than DJ Boy isn't really saying a whole lot. One thing that frustrates me about this game is that there are so many enemies on screen at once and they all take seemingly a hundred hits to defeat. They surround you so it's hard to get a kick in edgewise. I think if they had life bars it would probably be a bit more tolerable, but as it is now you have no idea how much damage any enemy has taken and they take a lot. I feel that they could have refined the gameplay a bit more in this area. And you had better make sure you defeat every single enemy before you try to advance, otherwise you can get stuck because the screen often won't let you scroll back to get them. Apparently they didn't test their game very well. It seems to me like there probably isn't any more than 10 different enemies in this game, not counting the bosses. Also, I sometimes find that it's tough to turn my character around and instead I moonwalk. This makes it tough to target the character that I'd like to attack. I really do like the graphics for the most part as they're a huge step up from DJ Boy. The music is full of early 90s style rap. Not licensed stuff or anything, but original rapping for the game. I've got to admit, it is kind of catchy and it definitely helps raise the energy level. Probably not something I particularly want on my iPod though. It probably never came to a home console because DJ Boy sold very poorly on the Mega Drive and the Genesis. Battletoads was released in the arcades in 1994, and this would actually be the last game in the series. There's lots of blood and cruel deaths in this game, which makes this the most graphic version of Battletoads I've ever seen. Actually, I don't mind this, as it's not over the top, and most of the deaths are given out to rats, who nobody likes, and big fat pigs, who probably wouldn't taste very good anyways. The game has some really long levels, and the action is non-stop. This game was developed by Rare, and actually was released by Electronic Arts. You choose from one of the three Battletoads with the always great names of Pimple, Zitz, or Rash. Or if you're lucky enough to have two friends, you can play three players. Chances are though, you'd find this game in an arcade before you're able to find two friends. I'm proof, and as you know, Joe is my friend, and I really don't have any others besides him. Don't pity me though, cause I'm okay with this. Well, I'm not okay with it. Anyways, it's a fun Battletoads game where your fists, feet, or head turn really big when you land a huge hit. I really like the scaling enemies as you kick their butt towards the screen. I never get sick of seeing this. This game boasts a whopping six stages and for the most part they're straightforward beat em up levels, except for the last stage. In this stage you have a gun and are sadly stuck on the back of a small spaceship for the entire level. The music is pretty enjoyable and it's even catchy at times. I'm guessing that Battletoads ran its course and that people felt they put as much money into the property as they were willing to, and that might be why we never got a home release. It's a great game that should have been brought home somewhere, and who knows, maybe it will come home to some sort of virtual console someday. Mystic Warriors is an oriental run and gun by Konami. In this game, ninjas are on the cusp of conquering the entire world. I don't know, that doesn't sound so bad. Ninjas are pretty cool, right? 
Well, some of the bad ones capture your fellow ninja friend and you've got to rescue his wimpy ass. And you guessed it, this game uses the same arcade hardware as Sunset Riders. You can have up to four players at the same time. Man, things get chaotic enough in single player, I can't even imagine what that'd be like. Plus, I only have one friend, so what am I gonna do? You can choose your character when you start the game or continue. Each of the four characters, well actually five characters, seem to have the same abilities from what I can tell. One might be faster or slower than another, but I was hard pressed to tell any significant differences. You can power up your shots by opening certain boxes. These boxes also contain screen clearing attacks or give you a temporary shield. You can even replenish your life and get bonus points from these boxes. The boxes are your friend. Basically, the game plays almost exactly like Sunset Rider, so you know it's awesome. It gets quite addictive as well, and I always want to continue when I die. The graphics are done in kind of a cartoony style with lots of vivid colors and everything is really well drawn. There's plenty of parallax scrolling and a bit of scaling here and there. I like how in the beginning of this stage you can see the plane crashing in the background that you were just fighting on. I love little details like this. You just look at this game and it makes you want to play it. Or at least it makes me want to play it, but I'm already playing it. The music is excellent. It has a very Asian flavor to it. I mean, it would if you could taste music, I guess. The sound quality overall is also excellent. The bosses are kind of chatty and they say goofy things before you fight them. My rocket is the best. No. <laughs> this is a great game and I'm not sure why Konami never brought it to a home console. It's too bad too because I think the world could always use more Sunset Rider style action. Bucky O'Hare is a great game by Konami released in 1992. This one is a beat em up and it's completely different than the NES version that you may be familiar with. The game plays similar to the other beat em ups by Konami at the time like Turtles, X-Men, The Simpsons, and all of those. If you don't know who Bucky O'Hare is, that's alright because he's kind of obscure. He was a comic book character in the late 1970s and had a one year run as a cartoon in 1991. But what's important is that this is a great game. You can play as one of four characters in your attempt to beat up and destroy all the Toads from taking over the Anniverse. Eight long levels are here for your enjoyment and they all play fairly similar for the most part. The graphics are super colorful with lots of nice detail. There's not a lot going on in the background graphically, but you know what, that's alright as you don't want to be distracted from the waves of enemies being constantly tossed at you. In between levels, you're treated to some really cool cutscenes that piece the story together and they're all done by the original actors from the cartoon. No fly sucking slimy croaking piece of sludge toad is taking over planet punk. I really like the music in this game and it has a nice space adventure feel to it. A fun little fact is that most of the game designers went on to be part of Treasure who, as we know, have released lots of quality games. I'm not sure why this game never got a home release. Turtles 4 worked really well on the Super Nintendo, and this could have been another great beat em up to go alongside that one. Sadly, it was never meant to be, so it just ended up being shown on a lame ass episode of GameSack. Blood Brothers is an interesting game by Tad Corporation. Remember Tad? In this game, you stand on a single screen shooting down anything that moves. Cowboys, Indians, horses, pigs, it doesn't matter. The environment is all extremely destructible and it's really easy to bring down entire buildings. Your goal is to simply kill enough bad guys to deplete the foe meter at the bottom of the screen. You have four scenes per stage and the fourth scene has a boss fight. You have a shot button, a button to lob grenades, and another button to roll in order to dodge enemy shots. You can get weapon upgrades and all that sort of good stuff. It definitely ramps up in difficulty quite a bit once you get to stage 2 or 3. So yeah, it plays very similar to Cabal, which I'm sure some of you have played. Okay, maybe a lot of you. It's made by the same people, so I guess that should be no surprise. Anyway, you're supposedly trying to hunt down some big outlaw, and in order to do that, I guess you need to destroy entire towns. I don't know, to me it seems like you're on a rampage to kill and destroy, and the good townsfolk are just trying to defend themselves and their town but you're just hell-bent on killing them and destroying everything they ever built. Yeah, to me, that just feels more right. I think my favorite part of the game is when you win a stage and you run off into the distance. You're just so damn happy that you destroyed everything and you get to go and destroy something else. The graphics are good and I like the details in each scene and how much of it can be damaged by your shots. 
The music is okay, but it rarely changes and it sounds pretty wimpy for an arcade game released in 1990. I really did have a good time with this one and it probably didn't come to a home console because they thought people wouldn't have been impressed since it didn't have any fancy scrolling, but who knows? I like it more than I like Cabal, I'll tell you that. All right, man, those were some five awesome games that would have been kick-ass on my Super Nintendo. <laughs> those were some <laughs> five awesome games, but I think they would have been highly compromised. Yeah, the they Nintendo. probably would have been a little bit On the bit Sega Saturn, however, I think they would have been yeah, really, true. really good. Yeah, that's true. I would have played them on the Saturn. Yeah. Anyway, we've got, well, we've got five more, so don't go away. Here's Hook by Irem, which is based on the movie of the same name. There's lots of home console versions of Hook by Sony Imagesoft, but this one is a bit more fun than any of those. It's your standard arcade beat-em-up, and I really had a fun time playing this game. You know, I was never a really big fan of the movie Hook, but I really like the Peter Pan animation by Disney. Being that they're based on the same character and story, they obviously have lots of similarities. In this game, you can choose to play as Peter Pan, Rufio, or three of the Lost Boys. All of them play the same, but have different attacks and special animations. You know, Peter Pan should have been the only playable character. Why would you want to play as anyone else? They're probably there for multiplayer. I feel sorry for player two. The fighting is fun, and there are a lot of weapons, treasures, and life to pick up along the way from barrels and treasure chests. I like the spear that you check at your enemies. It looks like it sticks in their heads as it pushes them off the screen. That's awesome. There's some large boss fights here, and of course a battle with Captain Hook, and you know what, he's just as you would expect him to be, a cowardly, dirty fighter. Even Mr. Smee is here, that blithering idiot. It's a good looking game with some decent music, which makes me wish this game came to a home console. I'm not really sure why Irem didn't bring this one home, but if I had to guess, I would say that the game wasn't popular enough to spend the time and cash on a home release. Also, Sony probably owned the rights to any possible console versions. <laughs> Boogie Wings by Data East is a really cool game that came out in 1992. At first it appears it's just a horizontal shooter with a biplane that takes place maybe around World War I. That in itself is pretty cool as most shooters simply have you flying around shooting things in space. But no, your plane has a grappling hook and you can pick up bombs and other objects and hurl them at the enemy. You can pick up almost anything, but not everything causes damage. Some things can cause a ton of damage like picking up tanks and tossing them into the bigger enemy. Also, if you press the fire button quickly, you generate a lightning bomb type of weapon that briefly envelops your plane. If your plane gets hit, well, you're not done yet. You jump out and continue on foot like the total badass that you are. You can run every bit as fast as you were flying and jump almost just as high. Your sprite is super tiny and for some weird reason, I kinda like this. As you're running around, you can still shoot your gun and also jump into many different vehicles or even on a horse. It almost reminds me of Metal Slug, but with teeny tiny sprites instead. You can even get on a pogo stick, but that doesn't last long. The game doesn't take itself seriously at all, and I always like that in a game. God, I miss Data East. I really wish they were still around. The graphics are great with tons of small details everywhere, like the Blues Brothers? Or how about this little dog that's following you around and it can't be destroyed? I love stuff like that. Everything is really small, but again, there's something really appealing about that for some reason. And no, get your mind out of the gutter. I'm not making excuses for myself. Leave me alone. The music is great too. I probably wouldn't listen to it outside of the game, but you can tell this game is all about having fun. The music is just so happy while you're blowing the crap out of everything you see. This game really should have come out on a console because it was unique and there wasn't anything really like it. I've no clue why it didn't. Companies had no problem releasing shooter after shooter where you just fly over a boring black background, so why couldn't we get more unique stuff like this? So, if you can, please go back in time and convince Data East to bring this out on the Saturn. Thanks. Here's a nice little beat em up by Data East called Night Slashers. This is a great zombie apocalypse game that came out way before zombies were cool. You can choose from three different characters, but I think my favorite is this vampire hunter guy. 
I like his moves and he seems a bit quicker than the other characters. Speaking of moves, each character has their own melee attacks, special moves, and super special moves. These are all great, but as is the custom with arcade games, using your super special moves will drain your life bar. This, of course, makes you dump in more quarters. These special moves work great in upper levels when you're being swarmed by enemies and actually can save your life even if you have to give up some. There's not a ton of different enemy types here. There's lots of zombies and just plain evil people as well. Graphically, the game is pleasing. There's some nice level designs, characters, and enemy sprites. I like when you defeat some of the boss characters and their skin melts off of their bones. This is a really nice touch. I also like when enemies turn into a pile of goo. <laughs> it's these little additions that help make a game feel more complete. What's interesting is that the Japanese version which I'm playing here has lots of blood in it. The US version just has green slime because we just can't handle blood in our games. The music is really enjoyable as well. It has some really eerie melodies all with a good tempo. I only have a few complaints about this game. Firstly, when you pick up an item, I really, really hate the off-key whistle that accompanies that action. I just can't believe they couldn't have found a better sound effect for that. Secondly, whenever you're button mashing and fighting an enemy, you can't just stop at any moment. You need to wait before you can turn around and attack another enemy who is coming up behind you. This happens in a lot of games, and you know what, it's really annoying. Other than that, this is a really fun game and it would have been a great one for our Halloween episode. Why Data East didn't bring this bad boy home to consoles is a crime. Dementia. You caught me off guard! Nitro Ball is another unique game by Data East. This one is an overhead run and gun that looks kind of like Mercs and is also a pinball game? Yeah. The pinball part doesn't happen very often though, so it's mostly a run and gun. The game has a very Smash TV feel to it. You're on a game show and as you shoot certain things, they spit out prizes for you to collect. There are a total of five different areas based on certain themes. For example, the first area is called Strange Football, where everything is football themed, only strange. Then there's also the combat field, Ghost Town, Aliens World, and the Space Station. Between rounds, you have what they call a match chance. If you time your button press and match the red number, you get to play a bonus round, which you basically just run around shooting things to collect more prizes. And like real TV game shows, each level ends in the boss fight. The action is pretty fast and intense, and it really takes a lot of skill not to get hit. It's definitely a quarter muncher, and you'll be dying quite a bit. I like all of the different weapons you can collect. They can make things easier, at least temporarily. Sometimes the game will give you a goal, like destroying all the tanks within 10 seconds. If you can do this, then you get even more prizes. Oh, you know the IRS is gonna be up your ass over all this stuff. I think my favorite stage is the ghost town, mainly because I like that kind of stuff, and the boss is really cool too. The graphics are all pretty good, and the screen is vertically oriented, though I don't think it's necessarily needed in this game. The sound and music are both great. If it exists, I really need to get the soundtrack to this one. With only five stages, the game is pretty short. I was able to beat it in less than 20 minutes, but that was with constant continuing. Probably the best thing about this game is that if you win, you get to be president. What other qualifications could you need besides winning a TV game show? This would be a good game to have on consoles, but I think it needs to be a bit longer. Thundercross 2 is another great shooter by Konami. As far as sequels go, Thundercross 2 delivers in all areas. The first game was pretty good, but it did get a release on the PS2 in Japan, so we won't be talking about that version. Graphically, the game is beautiful, with bright colors and some nicely detailed backgrounds. Multiple layers of parallax scrolling add some really nice depth to each level. The sound is great with some awesome music. It's really upbeat and has that Konami feel to it. Some of the levels have branching paths, which is nice, and it adds quite a bit of replayability. The weapon power-up system is pretty standard. When you first start out or respawn, your first power-up is always an option. The second power-up is always a speed power-up. And after that is the weapon power-up, and personally, I like the lasers the best. You can end up getting a bunch of options for your ship, which is nice. There's also a power-up that makes your options super huge. This power-up has a life bar, and the powers return to normal after it empties. 
This is a nice touch, but the only thing that I don't like about this is that your options are stationary in this mode. It's not a big deal, but I would have liked to have been able to put my options where I think they would have been most useful. The game isn't super difficult. I suck hugely at shooters and I was able to do fairly well, and I didn't even die once fighting the level 2 boss. I'm so proud of myself. This is a great shooter that Konami should have brought to the PS2. I guess they wanted to focus on the Gradius series, so we got nothing. And there you go, more awesome arcade games that never came home to the Sega Saturn where they belonged. No, why would they come home to there? I mean, well, if you want to do it proper, you're just going to go ahead and buy the arcade cabinet and bring that into your house. And, you well, know. yeah, uh, if I had room, I mean, if I had like mm -hmm. more than a studio apartment, maybe. Well, yeah, but you could always, I don't know, storm in my house and you can come over and play whenever. <laughs> so. well, I guess that yeah. would be an option. That would be an option. Um, anyway, uh, let us know if there's more arcade games that we haven't covered in these three Left in the Arcade mm -hmm. episodes that you'd like to see in a future installment yeah. of this. And they have to be awesome. We don't yeah. want any, like, uh, you know, clacks or something like that. Yeah, so. clacks did come home, though. Anyway, yeah. in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. All right, man, I'm down to my last quarter, Joe, and I'm gonna go play me some Pac-Man. Oh, come on, Dave. I've been funding your arcade experience after every one of these arcade episodes, I think, yeah. since we've been making them. <laughs> and it's awesome, I appreciate but it. But I'd like to play an arcade game now. There's, you know, plenty around here I'd like to play, and come on, how about you give me one of your quarters for well, once and I play a game? All right, I guess so, but you yeah. have to play Pac-Man. I'm not gonna play Pac-Man. What, what do you think I should play, though? Oh, you know what? Uh, play Afterburner. I just played it. The control's awesome. It's just like it came right out of the freaking warehouse. This thing Dude, is awesome. Sweet. I'm going to go play me some Afterburner. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's my quarter, so put my initials in. The buttons don't work. Get fire! What the hell? Dave told me to play a game that doesn't even work. I've got to get him back.